So what are we going to learn? I'm going to give you six new words. Some of these words maybe you already know. I'm going to teach you how to pronounce these words correctly using a technique known as blending and segmenting, which will help improve your pronunciation. And if that wasn't enough, I'm also going to give you three idioms every lesson. Now, idioms are very important to understand native speakers. Why? Because idioms are words that have one meaning, but when put together in a phrase or sentence, can have a totally different meaning and leave you wondering why we're talking about donkeys when we're discussing what to do in the office. So here's our first lesson. And this lesson is all about work. Okay? So our first word is manual work. Now, watch closely to my lips. Manual. Three sounds, right? Manual. But when we speak it quickly, these sounds get squeezed together. So we hear manual. Manual. If you listen closely, you can still hear those three sounds. This is what correct pronunciation is. Making all the sounds that are in the word, and if necessarily, squeeze them together. So they change slightly. So here's our first word. Manual work. Which is work you do with your hands. Manual. No machines. Manual work. Manual work. You'll also hear that the word work, spelt W-O-R-K, isn't pronounced as you're expecting. We don't hear walk. It sounds more like an E-R sound. And this is our old friend, the schwa. Those of you that have taken some of my Udemy courses will already know about the schwa. So the sound we get is Manual. Manual. Three sounds. Work. W. Uh. K. Work. Manual work. A second word is housework. A house is another name for your home. So the word house means here something to do with your home. And housework is the term we use to describe cleaning your house, tidying up, washing the dishes, sweeping the floor. All these tasks are known as housework. Huh. Ow. S. House. W. Uh. K. Work. Housework. Word number three. Beloved of students, our word is homework, homework. So again, we've got h, o, m. The e here is silent because it's used to pronounce the o sound instead of the o sound. So h, o, m, home, homework. And we all, all students are familiar with this word in English which means having to study at home, ready for the next day at school. So, homework. I hope you've done your homework. There will be homework later. Phrase number four, hard work. Hard, something that isn't soft. And our old friend, work. Put together, hard work describes something that is difficult. Do you have hard work in the office? Or do you have an easy day? Hard work. There we go. Hard work. A fifth word is office. O -f -i -s. Now here, the E is silent and it doesn't produce the magic E sound of I. So it's not ice although indeed we know ice to be a word on its own. Here the word is office, office. And combined with work, we get office work, which is indeed 
work we have to do in the office, generally not involving lots of difficult tasks using our hands other than using our computer maybe. So office work. The opposite of manual work, which could involve digging and sweeping and doing all these other tasks. And here are today's idioms. Now, you'll see on the picture yeah, that we've got a, a diagram that uses two cogs and a spanner. Now, in English, we say spanner, but in America, they might also use the word wrench. And so the idiom could be slightly different depending whether someone is indeed British or American. But the meaning is still the same. So our phrase is to put a spanner in the works or to put a wrench in the works. Both mean the same thing. The cogs can't turn freely and smoothly if you have put something in the middle to block their path. So to put a spanner in the works simply means that through your action or inaction you've stopped a plan from happening. You've thrown a spanner in the works and gummed up the machine. You stopped the machine from working. And in this case, the machine could be a real machine or indeed a plan of action in your business. So to throw a spanner in the works means that something that you plan to happen now can't happen for whatever reason. Idiom number two involves our friend work and an animal. So our phrase is donkey work. Now I'm sure you understand a donkey, you can see this animal, but why do we talk about donkey work? Well, sorry donkeys, you're not known for being the cleverest animal in, in the universe. Donkeys are generally slow and steady, pretty boring, yeah? So to do donkey work simply means to have to do a repetitive task that needs to happen, but that nobody wants to do. For example, filing all, all those letters in the office in alphabetical order or date order. Useful for sure, but nobody actually wants to spend all their time doing the donkey work. So to do the donkey work means to have to do something pretty boring that you didn't want to do. Our third idiom is to describe a person. And the phrase is a nasty piece of work. Now, nasty means something that's not nice, and a piece of work, yeah? something you have to do. Now, put together, if you describe somebody as a nasty piece of work, it means they're not your friend. They're the person in the office that's always telling the boss you made a mistake or you didn't do something. They're always trying to get ahead at your expense. So that's definitely a nasty piece of work. I hope you don't have this kind of person in your office. So there we have it. There's your first lesson. Manual work, housework, homework, hard work, and office work. And the three phrases that you learned are to put a spanner in the works or to put a wrench in the works, to do donkey work, and to describe somebody as being a nasty piece of work. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this short lesson and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.